Welcome back! Today I'm going to show you how I transform this image to that image. Hello, my name is Philip and I'm going to show you today what I did to that image to make it look like a kind of a, well, magical, maybe tree standing in the middle of Arthur's courtyard. Alright, there you go. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the canopy nice and pink and then I'm going to bring some contrast to the walls, make the whole thing darker, add some lightning rays and then add some dust down here just because it looks nice. And we're going to start off with the tree. So I have some issues with the tree. The first one is it's not that dense. So the canopy is not too dense at all. So what I would like to do is I'm going to take some branches from here and pop them over there just to make the give the impression that the canopy is actually fuller than it is. So first I'm going to start off by hitting Command and J on my keyboard which will duplicate my layer. So you see now I have the background layer and now I have the layer again up here. And I'm going to zoom in to something like that. Hit L on the keyboard which brings up my lasso tool. And I'm just going to start to select a certain branch. Maybe something like that. It's not too bad. I'm just going to do that quickly here. And obviously you can take forever with that. Okay, once I have done that I'm going to hit Command and J again. Which will bring that selection up onto a new layer. And then when I press V it enables me to you know move that piece around a little bit. Which is not bad. Okay, and I'm going to move it over here, and first I'm going to flip it over to something like uh, that, and then I'm going to grab one of the corners and turn it around to something like that. Okay, that's not bad. We don't have to be worried too much about color and uh, sharpness and things like that, because I'm going to blur the whole canopy in the end either way, so I don't really, I don't really care. You know? <laughs> Once I'm kind of happy with the position, I'm just going to hit Enter, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to double-click on that layer, which brings up my layer style. So what I don't want, I don't want the lights or the bright parts basically from in between these branches to be visible. So what you can do, you go just to the this slider down here, okay, so, oh sorry, this slider actually, this layer, okay, so we're working on this layer, and you don't want it to be visible where the lights are, right? So let's just ha hold Alt, press on your keyboard, and move it down, and you see that's gonna take the brights out to a certain point, and just do that until you're happy, all right? So if you move it around now, let me just close that, hit OK there, press V, and show you that you can actually see through the branches because all the whites are gone. That is not bad, that is actually exactly what I wanted. So let's just drag that maybe to some place like, uh, like that. Yeah, that could do the trick. And then I'm going to create a layer mask by clicking the little Japanese flag down here. <laughs> Once I have that layer mask, I can just start to actually work a little bit on that selection. So I'm going to hit V, which brings up my brush tool. I'm going to make my brush nice and small. And I'm gonna, because the layer mask is white and I want to hide certain things, so I'm gonna have to paint with black in order to select black. In the moment I have white, I'll just hit X on the keyboard and that'll like flip the colors basically, so black to white. If I do that again, you see white, black, white, black, white, black. So we want black. Let's zoom in a little bit. Do it to something like that and make the brush a bit smaller, maybe a bit more, and just start to get rid of, of um, you know, some of these hard edges right here. And as I said, you don't have to be too super careful with that, as it will be you know, adjusted later on anyway. <laughs> All right. Okay, maybe something like that. And just kind of weird stuff here. You don't need that because there's actually the real canopy beneath. So that is completely okay. Okay. And that as well. And this. So once I have done that, so we have that branch and that one layer. So I'm going to create a curves adjustment and I'm going to clip it to that layer. Okay, so now when you click, click here, you're going to create a clipping mask. That's the name. And you get a little arrow pointing down to that layer, indicating that whatever adjustment you're doing now is just going to affect that branch. So you see if I increase or decrease the brightness, uh, nothing else will basically you know, show up. There you go. And now we're going to bring that to an approximately same brightness as the rest there. So maybe something like that. Yeah, maybe even a bit more. That means we have to slightly adjust our blending mode in just a second. Actually, we're going to do that first. Otherwise, we're going to get in some some issues here. Let's bring this back, bam, and let's do it again. So let's click here. We can still work on that, obviously, and just up or down to something like yeah, that doesn't look bad at all. Okay, as I said, we can make some global adjustments later as well, so there is no issue. And we can also change the hue if we feel like. So let's do it again. Double click, move it out of the way so that we can actually see what we are doing. Hold Alt pressed and say, ooh, that's going to be a hard one. Go down, down a bit more, yeah, yeah, something like that. All right, remember colors, we're gonna change everything to pink, so there is no 
no issue. Let's just get rid of that as well. Okay. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing just to fill in a little bit more of that gap right there. Okay. So this time we could grab a different branch or we could grab actually the same one as well and just flip it over. And I think that's going to be a little bit easier. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hit, uh, okay, I'm going to select that layer here with our branch on it. And I'm going to hit Command and J, which will duplicate that. And I'm going to select the layer beneath and just drag it on top of everything. So now we have another branch. If I hit V now, I can move that branch around as well. Okay. So probably I'm going to flip it back over to its original state. Otherwise it's going to look too to uniform, that's not what we want. I'm just gonna place it somewhere here, maybe. Yeah, maybe a bit more like that, maybe like that even. Hmm. I do not know, you have to experiment with these things. But probably that will not look bad in the end. Obviously I can't predict, but that's just what I hope. So let's just hit enter. And um, now we're gonna use our curves adjustment again. We're gonna clip it to the layer beneath as we did before and just increase the brightness a notch to something like that. That's not bad. Good, and then we're gonna create, a well, actually have the layer mask, and we're gonna press B for our brush. Make it a bit, oops, no, make it a bit uh, larger and just get rid of some junk right here. Something like that. Okay, and I'd like to clean up the tree once I'm actually, you know, done with all the kinds of uh, branches I wanna position somewhere. So, well, that's not bad at all. I'm kinda happy with that. Good, so that's the first step. We have made the tree a little bit fuller, all right? So you can see if I remove that one, this branch there, and this branch down here. And in the end, they're going to be purple as well, so nobody will ever see any difference, besides that we are blurring it anyway, so there you go. All right, step number one, making the tree a bit fuller, done. All right, let's make that thing nice, pretty, and pink. I like pink. Okay, there you go. So what you have to do is you create a new layer, hitting the new layer symbol down in the lower right, I like a so, and you have a new layer now here. I'm just going to select the pink I was using before. Obviously, you can choose whatever color you want. Now, pink shows up here, uh, pink and white. That's what we want. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in to something like that. And once I'm there, I'm going to hit B for my brush, make it a bit larger, just something like that. And with an opacity of 80%, I'm just going to start painting over the canopy and leaf material. Yep, that's not bad. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And make it a bit smaller. Obviously, the more time you take with that, the better. It'll look at the end and if I don't have one thing it's time because otherwise you're gonna be bored to death I do not want that now do I good good let's do something like that a bit of here uh, and that stuff here okay now let's increase our brush size a bit something like that go here I'll make it a bit smaller again and just finish up here and I'm even gonna go into this area right here. Good, looking good. Okay, and there's a bit left here, and a bit left here, and a bit left there, and I can just go over it for, I don't know, another two hours, I guess. Or something like that. Probably you're thinking, oh my god, Philip, that looks really weird. What are you doing? Stop what are you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna stop in just a minute. Okay, that doesn't look too bad at all. So, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go from blending mode normal, down to blending mode color and that'll change the color everywhere where there is no pure white okay so everywhere where there is a color it's going to change it to pink all right so that's not bad and uh, now we're going to go to the blending mode so we're just double clicking on that layer i'm going to move that out of the way just a notch and so what we don't want we do not want that visible that pink visible where the underlying layer is kind of dark because the dark stuff is most likely at least these massive branches here we could also cut them out manually, and I guess we're going to do a mixture of both. Uh, we also do not want it have uh, the do look words do not want it to be visible in the pure brights on the leaves, uh, the leaves edges basically. So I'm just going to bring first that thing up here. So it was like that. Just hold Alt under under underlying layer, under under underlying layer, and turn that up. So you see the branches there kind of come out a bit more, which is exactly what we want. Let's do it something like something like that maybe and you could even bring that in so you see everything is coming back and it's just about finding the right mixture between the the blending modes you want to use let's just move that a bit more out of the way how does it look over here oh that's not bad i can kind of live with that all right let's just hit okay and then with the layer selected we could create a layer mask by hitting the little japanese flag down here we're going to zoom in to our big branches 
And with the brush still selected, I'm going to take an opacity of 30%, which I just do by hitting 3 on my keyboard while my brush is selected. So now I have an opacity of 30%, a white layer mask, and I'm just going to brush out the effect on certain, you know, certain places where it doesn't make much sense to have it. For instance here, let's just reduce it here a bit. Again, we're going to blur that area massively, and we're going to add crazy light. So there is not the real need to spend hours on that. But, uh, you know, you, you could, if that's what you like to do, spending hours on that. Who am I to stop you, right? <laughs> Get that branch back right here, maybe a bit out there. Something like that. And that looks like it was a branch once as well. So let's just uh, give it some more color, or something like that. And here we have a massive color accident. So let's just bring that back as well. Yeah, that's not bad. And the same here, color accident. Okay. I'm just going to hit X, which will turn my brush to white, and I will bring back the effect when I paint over the actual branch. I'm just going to switch back and forth between white and black here to uh, make the effect disappear or appear wherever I want. Let's see, that's a nice way, that's the fun part. Well, at least for me it is anyway. Otherwise, why would you do it? All right, so that doesn't look too bad. I guess we can kind of kind of live with that. So we still have some minor areas here where it's not pink just yet, but we can fix it in just a second. So outside there is massive traffic, so I apologize if you hear the horn of uh, some of the cars, but you know, they're angry, they want to get home. And that as well here. All right, that's not bad. Okay, actually, stay out of this branch area right here a little bit as well. X. Again, the more time you spend on that, the better it's going to look at the end. But I'm just going to give you an example anyway, so yeah. Okay, that should do the trick, I guess. Good, let's zoom out a little bit and see. Well, that's not bad at all. That's just one thing. This thing up here looks like it should actually be purple, or at least a bit more purple. And let's just bring it back to purple, is what I would think, but it just doesn't want to do it. Why don't you want to do that? Oh, yeah, I guess because I have to hit X. Oh, that is weird, isn't it? Okay, 50%. Oh, here it's working. Oh, ah, I see, because we said don't appear in the darks. Ha! Well done, Philip. So we can just go in here and see if we can fix that a little bit. By bringing that down again, but no. I guess it was the other way. Like, this one is probably responsible. Yeah. All right, we're just going to live with it and fix it together with the other uh, the other branch material down here, which is still green as well. Good, so I'm just going to select that layer again. I'm going to hit B for my brush, and uh, with the pink selected and an opacity of, say, 30%, I'm just going to start to brush over the remaining um, leaf material, because it's going to take all the effects we have just given, basically, to the layer, so it's going to you know not be in the darks too much, blah, 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 all these kind of things. And that's what we want, right? So you're seeing I'm doing a very quick and dirty job right here. So if you try that at home, please take your time. There's no rush. Okay. And let's just pump in some color in here as well. All right. We can always, you know, get rid of it if we don't like it too much. Again. Okay. Okay, well that shall do the trick for now. So it's it's pink, it's pretty. So stamp two, making it pink and pretty. Good, well done. Could be better, but we have no time. So let's do the next one. All right, let's do some adjustments before we go to the lighting effect. Lightning and lighting. We, can, we want the lighting effect this time. Lightning was yesterday. All right, so what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna do a brightness, or I'm gonna create a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. And I'm just gonna increase the contrast all the way. All right, first step, that's number one. Once I have done that, I'm going to create a hue and saturation layer. I'm going to bring down my saturation because the, pink, the pinks are just, they're real. Like, you know, something like that is not bad. I kind of like it. I'm going to close that. I'm going to hit B on my keyboard. So you see, see the adjustment layer is white. So if we were to draw it with black on that layer, it's going to hide the effect wherever we, we paint, basically. Okay, so with an opacity of, say, 40% selected, I will bring back the... Uh, the color basically in certain areas right there, okay? Because we, you know, we don't have to remove it everywhere. It was just this kind of immense amount of pink, which is 
kind of made me blind. All right, that's that's not bad at all. Kind of like that. Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to decrease the brightness. I'm going to use a simple curves adjustment layer right here. I'm just going to decrease the brightness until I feel quite satisfied. Maybe something like that is not bad at all. Good, we're going to do the same thing. I don't want that everywhere, so I still have my brush selected. If not, hit B, and with an opacity of 40%, no, 60%, we are being generous. I'm just going to bring back the brightness in the, in the canopy right here. And I'm going to bring back the brightness also in the tree, because I kind of like that the tree is you know, not invisible at least. And I'm going to bring it back a little bit right here, and with an opacity of 20%, I'm going to bring it back a little bit there, and even a tiny bit right here. That we have something like that. Now, ooh, there's traffic outside again. People are really angry sometimes. I do not understand. Okay. Uh, by the way, don't worry about that kind of uh, top thing here, right here in the upper right corner, because we're going to crop it in the end anyway and it's going to just disappear. Now that we have done that, I want to add the light effect. So I want to have light rays coming from, as you can see here on that shadow, coming from up here and going right down here. All right. So a simple way to do that is by just using this kind of washed out sky we haven't actually in that image. And what you can do is you can create a new layer. No, you don't create a new layer. First, you're going to create a stamp visible. Okay, so just hit Command, Alt, Shift, and E on your keyboard, which is going to copy everything you can see onto that new layer. And once you have done that, you can go to Select and down to Color Range. And this will enable you to, as the name suggests, to select a certain color range. There you go. So I'm just going to click once here in that sky, and this little preview actually shows you which areas you have selected. Okay, so everything which is white is now a selection. Yeah. I'm just going to hit OK, and you can see, or not, let me just uh, create a new layer, and I'll show you in a second. I'm going to create a new layer, hit G for my bucket tool, and just paint it with white into my selection. Right? And if I hide now everything else, and just that new layer we have created, you can see that in the, say, visible parts of the sky, there is no white color. Okay? Because I painted it just in there now with the bucket tool. Huh? As simple as that. Now, let's bring everything back. Hit Command and D, which is going to deselect certain things, and uh, it still hasn't changed, obviously. So now, with that layer selected, we're going to go to Filter, Filter I said, and uh, Blur. Here it is, and Motion Blur. Good, and obviously that still has the same settings as the ones I were using before. I was using before, so um, here you have to play around a bit. So here you can adjust your angle to whatever you prefer. Obviously, for me, I had to choose something which looks kind of kind of realistic. Let's just bring it to something like uh, that, maybe. And uh, yeah, I'm actually quite happy with that. So let's just hit OK. Let's go to think for a second. OK, so what we have now is kind of natural light rays coming from the sky and going down towards the ground. And you are actually using the light which is in the canopy. So you could obviously make every single light ray yourself. But in the end, it's going to be like an incredible amount of work. And I don't think it's really worth it. Now, let's put a layer mask on that by hitting the Japanese flag. Press B. And zoom in. I'm just gonna. Re I'm just gonna remove that uh, effect where I think it's a bit too strong and not really, not really making any sense either. So, for instance, up here a little bit. I bring down the opacity to a twenty percent, something like that. Go away. Go away. Yes. Go. Okay. It's gone. And yeah, the rest is not bad. You could bring it down here a little bit as well, and maybe with a ten percent. Just gonna bring it down a notch here as well, and down here. And again, that's one thing where you can take your sweet time, whatever you think is necessary to do it. Okay, so now we have a little bit of a, of a lightning, or lightning, this is incredible lighting action going on right here. And yeah, that was step number, I forgot count, I lost count. Is it three? Is it four? Let's just say it's three, okay? Step three, making light where there is none, or using light actually, which is there to make light rays, done. Okay, you know what? We're actually going to copy that. So I'm going to hit Command and J just to copy our light rays. And I'm going to bring the second layer down to about, yeah, 50% maybe. That's not bad. And uh, maybe with a brush, so I'm going to go to our layer mask. And with a brush of 20%, I'm just going to get rid of the light effect where it's a little bit too strong, which is down here and down there. But I like it that it's a bit more bright at the top here in the canopy. That's not bad. Good. So let's create a stamp visible with a little bit of words by hitting Command, Alt, Shift, and E. That's going to copy everything on that new layer. And once we have done that, we can go to Filter and then to where is it here? The Nick Collection and then Analog Effects Pro 2. Yeah, it's free, so why wouldn't we use it? We could do it manually, but uh, God, the effort. You, know, you want to get your stuff as quickly and as easy as possible. Good, so that's going to take apparently a second or five or ten. Hmm. 
Oh yeah, there we go. Good. Thanks, Nick. And we're going to go down to the classic camera 6 because I'm actually, I don't know that it worked with it, with that image. So let's do that. It's going to load some textures. Good. It's going to think a little bit and then we're just going to hit OK. And we are back. That just took about a minute. So I thought I'm going to bring you back rather than bore you with boring details of looking at the loading screen. OK, so now we have the thing, uh, which actually looks quite nice. I love what it's doing to the ground here. So I'm going to go and create a layer mask. And with my brush selected, just get rid of the effects in the, the canopy area right here, because I think it's a little bit too strong to be there. OK, so let's do that and maybe a little bit of that. And that is not bad. Good. Loving it. The next step is to create some dust. And to create to get dust, I'm going to create a new layer. And then I'm going to hit Command and N on my keyboard. And that'll bring up the, the new file kind of a you know screen thing. And I'm going to go with a width of 500 and a height of 500 as well. Hit OK. And you're going to get that. Right? So I have background transparent. You can use white as well, but nothing else. OK, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to select my brush. And I'm going to make it a little bit Wow, it's super large in the moment, so let's make that way smaller. Can I get my brush smaller, please? Oh, thanks, Photoshop. Good. I'm going to go with something like that, maybe. I'm going to hit D for default so that I get my black and my white back. I'm just going to start to paint, maybe even a little bit larger, but something like that. Here, and an opacity of 100% here. Make a dot here. I'm going to make another dot over here. I'm just doing it completely random. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Let's just do something like that. And maybe something like that and that up here. Good. And once we have done that, we go to edit and define. No, we go to, yeah, we go to edit. Where is it here? Define brush preset. And uh, we're going to call it dust. We hit enter. And now we have that brush basically made. Cool, huh? So let's apply the brush onto our image. So we go to the new layer we have just created in the image. And then we're going to go down to the area where we want to have some dust. And I want to have some dust right here. I'm going to select a very dark color, otherwise it's not going to be visible, something like that maybe. I'm just going to try how it looks. Okay, then it might work. Maybe it can go a little bit brighter. Can I go back? Yes. So maybe something like, hmm, maybe from here, let's see how that looks. Nah, even brighter. Let's go here. Okay, it's getting there. Let's go really bright and see how that looks. Bit too bright. <laughs> Again, one of these things. Spend time if you need to. No, it looks really bad. Uh, guys, what color do we want our dust to be? I don't even know. I can't remember what I did in the other one. Ah, oh, bad. Well, let's just assume. <clears throat> sorry, let's just assume we're going to take something relatively bright, something like here. I'm painted in. Okay, we can always reduce the opacity or even change the color of it later if that's what we need to do. So before we apply that, we're going to go to our brush presets and we're going to go to shape dynamics because we want to have the size jitter all the way up and the angle jitter all the way up and even the roundness jitter. Why not? And then we're going to go to scattering and we want to bring the scatter all the way up. And then we're going to go to transfer and I even want the opacity somewhere like uh, here maybe and the flow jitter and stuff like that we don't want. So that should be all we need. So let's try and see how that actually looks. That is pure greatness. I can't even believe it. So we have just made dust, guys. Great. What I actually have just painted there is not bad either. I'm going to keep it. And I'm just do, you know, don't want to bore you with the boring, boring details. Let's put some more there and maybe some more here. And, uh, you know, you can increase your brush size as well. So if that's what you want, then you get kind of massive stuff, which would look like if you were going to correctly as it would be in the foreground. I'm not going to do that right now. You can play with it yourself, obviously. And once we have that, we can just create a layer mask, like uh, so, Japanese flag, remember, go right click and go back to our normal brush. And once we have done that, increase that a little bit and uh, just remove the, the, the dust where we don't want it, okay? So for example, I think it should be more visible where it is actually quite bright. So I'm just gonna reduce its opacity down here a little bit. And these guys are quite bright as well. Let's go with something like that, it's not bad. You kind of annoy me. Good. And here it's, it's relatively dark down here, so you don't want it to be uh, too visible at all. Just barely, barely noticeable. And there you go, we have some dust in the image, okay? So that gives the whole thing a little bit of feeling, uh, because now, now there is something, okay? There's some sort of movement in there, which is not bad at all. Good. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to do another stamp visible by hitting Command, Alt, Shift, and E on the keyboard. I'm going to put all my keyboard shortcuts I'm, I'm using for this video down in the description. And uh, here I'm going to go from normal blending mode down to 
where are you overlay overlay blending mode which is going to look a little bit like that you may wonder why why would you do that you destroy everything no i didn't i'm just going to go back to filter and i'm going to go to blur and gaussian 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 blur and once i'm there you can just select you know whatever you feel like if you go high it's going to look like that it's a bit more kind of magic and if you go down it's going to look a bit more just a bit more dreamy right so i like the kind of dreamy effect so i'm going to go with three pixels right there and it's going to do it straight away. Okay, so now we can see before it's kind of relatively flat. And now it is, well, the darks are a bit darker, the brights are a bit brighter, which is not bad. But the whole thing has become a little bit less clear as well. Okay, and it gives the whole thing just kind of a nice feeling to it. Kind of like that. Okay, we're nearly nearly there. I don't even believe it. So while I'm quite happy with the ground, I'm all the time annoyed just by the, well, the proportions of the image. So let's press C on our keyboard, which brings up our crop tool. And we can just easily rotate that around a little bit, just because we have to. Otherwise, it's kind of a bit weird and odd and stuff like that. So let's go. We can even go down a little bit too far. Yeah, something like that may not be bad. And let's get back some of that. Mm -hmm. That was my housemate just leaving the house. Good. And once we have done that, we can. I think we can even go a little bit more in, guys. To be honest, and therefore just get rid of some of the. You know, just give it, a, make the tree looking more full because we cut off some of the blank edges. That's not bad. I'm actually going to hit enter and see what happens here. Remember to always have switched off delete crop pixels, so do not tick that. Otherwise, once you press enter, you're done for it. Yeah? You don't want that. Good. So that's not bad. And what we have now here at the bottom is kind of an empty, empty space. And I'm going to get rid of that at the very end because there is no need to do it right now. So for now, what I will do is I'm going to create a layer mask and I'm actually going to reduce that effect on certain places. So with an opacity of, let's say, 20%, I'm just going to remove it from, say, the walls a little bit, something like that, and maybe a little bit from back there. And especially that tree, I would like to have a little bit like that, yeah. Good, good, kind of happy, kind of like it. It's not bad at all. All right, so what I'm going to do then I mean, it depends really where you're going to go from here, okay? So you can either just use a blur, the blur tool. <laughs> I guess it's called the smudge tool. No, it's called the blur tool. It is actually cool. And with the blur tool, you can just, you know, blur out the trees, the, not the trees, the branches. Or I'm just going to copy or duplicate that layer by hitting Command and G, which gives me the same thing again. And uh, this time I'm going to increase the brightness of that layer. Something like that. Do I want to do that? Well, maybe we can try just a tiny bit, something like that. And here on that layer mask, actually, I'm going to go with uh, G, which is my bucket tool, and I'm going to press X, which makes it Y, just to remove everything. Apparently, I'm not going to do that. Okay, let's get the brush, hit zero, and just do white everywhere. Okay, there we go. Okay, and now I'm going to go and take black here by hitting X, make it a bit smaller, and just brush that brightness through a little bit where I would, well, actually, where I don't want it. Okay, so I don't want it at all here. And I don't even want it that strong up there. So let's just take 30%. And that should be all right. Okay, well, that's not bad at all. Let's see. Now it just adds a tiny bit of brightness, but I kind of like that a bit better. All right, so two last steps. First, I'm going to create another stamp visible by hitting Command Alt Shift and E again on the keyboard, which does that. And that's not bad. And um, before I actually finish it up, Normally I would walk away now for a second and check like after five minutes if the colors are still okay for me. And uh, doing that, I realize, oh, we have a little bit too much saturation, okay? So what I will do, I'll just bring it down to something like here, maybe. Okay, something like that may help a lot for the saturation. You can obviously then, you know, if you wanted to contain it for just the branches or you do it for the whole image. I'm just going to leave it for the whole image now because it doesn't look bad, bad at all. Good. Once we have done that, I'm going to actually blur some stuff. And obviously, you can blur with Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur, whatever you want to use. I'm just going to use the blur tool, and just because it's kind of fast. You know what I mean? So might as well. So let's do another stamp visible, and uh, go up here. Why is it? Ah, oh, I see why it's doing that. That is very annoying. Let's just remove that layer. Never mind. Good. And then go back once more with that, and now do another stamp visible. There you go. Good. Okay. Okay, so we're going to blur randomly, all right? So I'm going to blur a bit here. I'm going to blur that. So that doesn't have to be that necessary, like that visible. It's in the in the pure light, right? So why would it be actually in the first place? Let's just completely blur it out, right? 
blur it, blur it. And again, that's one thing where it can take an incredible amount of time if you feel like. I never do in my videos because I want to keep it short for you guys. So I'm just going to bring you back once I have done that. All right, and I'll just blur it a little bit more. And now I'm quite happy with it. So the last step will be to actually finish up these edges right there. Like this one down here because it's just not full. So it's not visible. There you go. And sometimes you need to create more. Sometimes you need to create less. And normally that works out just fine. Let's make it a bit smaller and bring in some random variation in here. All right. I mean, obviously I could just have dragged and dropped the whole thing around a bit, but uh, you know, for now that'll do. That'll do. All right. It doesn't look bad. Cool. Good. Let's go out. And yeah, there you go. So that's how I worked on that image. So let's have a quick look at the before and after. All right, guys. So let's go down and select with Alt. Hit the hit the little eye icon. So it went from here to there and back to here and back to there. Kind of nice. I like it. Um, obviously, when you do these kind of things, take your time, okay? So you want to make sure that the branches in your work are actually done a bit better. So take your time. You want to make sure there is no purple on the wall like I have here on the right side. Perfect. And uh, yeah, maybe you can even put some more branches to make it a bit fuller, like the canopy, you know, a bit more branches. I think that's what I did anyway. Good, but these are basically the techniques I have used to process that image. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to hit that like button or end or subscribe. And uh, well, there was a lot in here today, so I hope you can maybe use one or two of these techniques for yourself one day. And if not, maybe you just get inspired to, you know, take a picture of a tree and make it pretty and pink. And uh, good. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.